Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode of Loadout. Today's top comment comes from Kevin Sue, aka Kev. He says, the Battlefield Friends loadout, pick one. And he gave me four different options here. Rather than reading through all four, I'm just gonna read off the second loadout, which is what I picked for the engineer. This is the G36 or M4 with iron sights, ergo grip and heavy barrel. For the sidearm, we'll be running the P22 naked with a stinger instead of a smaller RPG. Then we have the repair tool, M67 frag grenade and anti-tank upgrade for more rockets. And then he writes, dun dun dun. Yes, it's time for your favorite characters from the popular Battlefield Friends to come to life. Time to kick some ass. And who doesn't like Battlefield Friends? If you haven't actually seen Battlefield Friends, then what the heck are you doing on the internet? Seriously, go watch some Battlefield Friends. They're awesome guys in real life. Their show is very funny and it really hits home on all the uh, weird things that happen in Battlefield. They've been nice enough to feature me in a couple shows as well. And here I am playing the engineer character from that show. I've always liked his character. He's one of the more level-headed characters that's always like uh, just complaining about whatever the heck is going on in the game. Usually some crazy wacky broken aspect of Battlefield. Now I chose to go with the G36C over the M4 and this is a fun assault rifle or carbine rather. Um, I like this gun a lot. It's a slower rate of fire. It's effective on conquest game modes but Probably not going to be as good on TDM where you're going up against people with AEKs and other heavier hitting assault rifles. It's just not going to hold up to those, but it's fine for most purposes in Conquest where you have a little bit more time to engage your opponent. The iron sights on this gun, however, are pretty bad, and that was probably my worst enemy. Just trying to track people with the iron sights on this gun could be very difficult. Now, one nice thing about combining the ergo grip and the heavy barrel is that they both have reductions to your spread increase, so you can keep your your accuracy uh, going for longer with this weapon and it even affects your accuracy while on the move it's gonna improve your accuracy while moving around so this is a very good running gun setup it doesn't require you to stand still um, and you can burst for longer periods of time before your fire becomes inaccurate so it's actually a pretty fun combo and it works well on slower rate of fire weapons because you're not as affected by the increase to vertical recoil. Usually slow rate of fire weapons like the G36C don't have too high of vertical recoil. So it's very easy to compensate even with the heavy barrel on. Now without question, this loadout was meant for conquest large game modes. I mean, I guess you could play it on rush, but when you've got a stinger on there, it means you're gonna need to shoot at a lot of air targets. The stinger is incredibly good at taking down air vehicles. I mean, it doesn't require much skill. You do have to kind of maintain cover, try and stay out of line of sight from infantry while you're locking on and lock on at the appropriate moments. Generally speaking, if an attack helicopter is flying directly at you, you want to take cover instead of firing your Stinger missile. But uh, I got plenty of air kills using my Stinger missile. It was a little bit hard dealing with armored targets though. I mean, I think I actually did get uh, one tank kill using my repair torch, which was kind of funny, but uh, I'm mostly used to running a SMA, and that way I can deal with armor targets, and if an air vehicle like a helicopter gets a little bit too close to me, I still stand a chance of taking it out. I've gotten pretty good at taking them down with the SMA, but the Stinger just gave me more options, and it was nice to sort of keep the air at bay, make sure that they didn't come around my area. Um, they would just fly away, pop their flares, or I would actually take them down. Now, of course, playing on sea of Shanghai here I was mostly engaging infantry targets not as many air but once I switched over to not Dragon Valley but Dragon Pass there was plenty of air targets tons of helicopters flew into my range and I got many many kills there's a little bit of air cover in this map but it's not always that easy to get behind it before the stinger engages and can hit your target so um, it's pretty easy to get vehicle disables or just full-on vehicle kills. And this is certainly one of those maps where an unanswered attack helicopter or scout helicopter can deal some serious damage, especially with dropping off infantry on the taller points in the map. Uh, that can be really aggravating when snipers and spawn beacons get up there. In fact, I think it's a little bit game-breaking. I'm always surprised how they let you put spawn beacons up on top of cliffs in this map, areas where infantry cannot get to. Now, because this is a carbine, I did feel a little bit limited at longer ranges. I mean, I'd have to expend most of my magazine to drop a target 
at further ranges. So for the most part, I would try and wait till my targets were at medium range before I started engaging with the G36C. It was always fun shooting down targets that had bailed out of helicopters as well. It's a nice cleanup weapon. Dragon Pass is definitely one of those maps that can be a little bit trickier to get to medium range before engaging your targets, just because there's so many flat areas and you have to run across big open terrain before engaging your enemy. Now I've always preferred the Stinger over the Igla. I don't know if you guys have used the Igla in this game yet, but it's the uh, lock on rocket launcher that requires you to maintain the lock on an air vehicle to take it down. And it has some benefits to it, but the only problem is that it requires you to spend so much of your time staring up in the air at your target that it leaves you wide open to ground threats. And you just can't do that to yourself in this game, especially in a 64 player concourse game with everybody trying to take you out, tanks, snipers, close quarter infantry. There's too many threats for you to be staring up in the sky that long. The Stinger lets you fire and forget. Lock on quickly, shoot your rocket, and then scan the environment around you for immediate threats. Now, rather than dedicating myself purely to this loadout, since we are playing on Conquest here, I decided to play a little bit more Conquesty and take advantage of vehicles when they when I came across them from time to time. I didn't try and just uh, vehicle whore all around, but definitely when playing Wavebreaker here, it seems silly to try and not take advantage of the attack boats when they're nearby. So I got in this attack boat here and went on a fun little killing spree with it, taking out helicopters and other attack boats. I mean, these things are just crazy powerful. And if you're good with those TV missiles, you can be the best weapon against both ground and air targets. And Wavebreaker really is a great map for all kinds of combat. I mean, it's excellent for naval combat because you have tons and tons of cover. So you can use the cover to your advantage. You can use speed and dodging to your advantage. Um, there's air vehicles. The air vehicles actually have cover. It's one of the best maps to play as the attack helicopter because of the giant island in the center. You can move around it and uh, dodge behind corners when you need to. And then in the center of the island, you have this big infantry area. It's probably not the best infantry combat area. I don't like the like actual internal um, combat area. I think it's a little too choke pointy, but the fact that it mixes in all different kinds of combat to one map pretty well is really cool, and I like that. I think most Battlefield maps should try and strive for that kind of gameplay. Ultimately, though, I think the Battlefield Friends Engineer loadout is actually pretty darn effective. I mean, this is the kind of engineer that you want in your squad. You want that guy with the stinger to back you up in case any air targets come near you. Of course, the Iron Sights is the one flaw with this loadout. There's absolutely no reason to use G36C Iron Sights unless you like pain. Uh, you should definitely throw a Coyote or Cobra Sight on there, though, and this will be that much more effective. Anyway, that wraps it up for today's episode of Loadout. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and don't forget to leave your comments down below letting me know what to run with for next week's episode. I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off. <laughs>